Okay, everybody has to follow my movements. This is the Okay. Are you recording already? Yeah. So that'll put, just make a start and do you need the lights down a little bit? No, don't change anything right now. Yeah. Dim a little bit or not? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then uh, just a quick short introduction. Okay. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for coming here in the presentation. Uh, today I will speak about the work I've been doing in here lab for the last approximately four months. That is the work I've been doing with the Kinect device that you can see here on the, uh, on the car box. And then I would like to make a, a like different presentation and actually the demo I develop is the presentation itself and I will try to interact using the, the Kinect and at the same time doing the presentation. Okay, I, I titled the presentation User Tracking Environment Reconstruction Using Multiple Kinects because uh, besides of tracking with single one Kinect, I also try to use multiple Kinects and, and, and let's see, and try to experiment a little bit with, uh, with this device. Okay, okay here's a list of points I will talk about. Here's I will make an introduction of the Kinect device. I guess everybody has seen or has played uh, before with the device. Then I will talk about how to develop application with the Kinect and how to specifically how to connect the, the device in your computer, which frameworks are available. I will go a little bit deeper with the OpenNI framework, which is the one I've used. Then uh, I will move to how to track the fingers, how to use the Kinect to help in this task, what, and what, is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the, the Kinect. Then mesh reconstruction, how the input uh, from the Kinect, we can build a mesh. And then how I can use multiple Kinects and what are advantages and disadvantages. And then I will present in future is like more or less uh, a conclusions and I will give my personal opinion on several aspects I will talk about. And then I will explain about how I built the demo and then I will show you uh, a video of that expands a little bit of my work. Let's see. This, uh, well, what is the Kinect? The Kinect is a motion sensing device that uh, was designed for the Microsoft, for the Xbox console. That what what has uh, special this device is that it allows you to uh, control the application or control or interact with any application and control any character without having to hold any physical device. That is uh, promoting the natural. Uh, natural interaction, that is, via gestures, via position of the body, even with the spoken commands, you can send information to a computer or, or to the video, or the video console to interact with that. Yes. Okay, here is, a, here is the Kinect device, and how can we achieve this natural interaction? Okay. Here we have the Kinect, and basically what it has that uh, has a camera that has the gives the RGB information here, and that is most of the cameras uh, can achieve that. But this camera has the particular that can estimate the dead information for each pixel, can estimate which distance is from the camera. How they, how it does that? It uh, has an infrared laser projector that emits infrared light and then has uh, a sensor that uh, with this infrared light that is projected to the environment, it can estimate the, the depth information. And here we have a, an image that for each, the, for each depth value, I map to a color. For example, the green is uh, when the distance is further and when the, it's more red, that is uh, where I am, is uh, closer to the kinetic. It has some limits because uh, um, here only allows to, cut, uh, to track the depth distance and uh, between like uh, 40 centimeters to 6 meters approximately. If you move further than that, it doesn't allow you to track well. Oops. How to 
how to interface with the Kinect because the Kinect was first thought by uh, to be used with the Xbox video console, but as soon as it was released the Kinect, some people have start uh, develop some drivers to allow allowing the Kinect to interface with the computer so that anybody can uh, make use of this tool for uh, his or her own projects. First of all, it was released a Leafrenec device, uh, a Leafrenec driver. But then, uh, in January and February, it was released the OpenNN Night framework. That is like a, that is a open source framework that allows to develop natural interaction applications. I will go a little bit deeper on, on this framework because it's the one I've used. Then two weeks ago, it was uh, released the Microsoft Kinect SDKs that uh, I haven't tried it, but uh, allows us also to uh, interface with the Kinect and to extract the information from it. Here in this web page, if you want, you can see that a, a, a comparison between these two frameworks. Basically, uh, we cannot say that one framework is better than the other. It depends on what you want. For example, now, now uh, OpenNN Night, if you want to represent a, a 3D environment and to you are more interested in the point cloud information, then uh, it's better to use OpenNN Night framework. But for example, uh, Microsoft Kinect is uh, is very good, for example, in working with sound and uh, interacting with spoken commands or, for example, calibration the user to track the skeleton. Okay. Here is like a diagram of the OpenNI Night framework. Move closer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then the OpenAI framework allows us uh, to easily develop um, natural interaction applications allows you to interface with the device. Here we have, for example, the Kinect and some other device. It's not, a, it's not only for, for the Kinect device. And uh, allows also to communicate with the application. In addition to that, it allows you to communicate with middleware software that basically what this software does is to uh, analyze uh, the information from the device and, uh, uh, and process it, for example, to extract the joints of the, of the skeleton of the user, to track any hand position, or to track any gesture. For example, uh, when you do a push gesture, then this middleware software can uh, allow you to do that. Then the OpenNI Net framework, that is the one I used, it allows uh, different, different uh, it allows very, uh, it provides you uh, with a framework that it's very easy, for example, uh, given the information from the Kinect, to easily extract the, the joints of the skeleton of the user and, uh, and to recognize different gestures. For example, uh, some of the default gestures that it can track is the push gesture, cycle, wave, swipe up, down, right, left, and also allows you to, to develop some uh, controls like making a slider with the hand or making a trackpad. Then uh, this framework uh, it still doesn't support or doesn't allow you to track the fingertip. And during this time, I also thought that who can uh, use the, this device also to make it easy to track, for example, the fingertips and what would be the advantage to do so with this device. The algorithm basically that I used is that uh, from the skeleton of the user, we know the position of the hand. Then what I did is like, uh, build like a 3D, bo a 3D bonding box uh, center in the position of the hand and then project this box into an image plane. You'll see in this image the, the, the different dots, the green dots that are the, project, the projected eight vertices from this 3D bonding box into an image plane. And then I, I created like a 2D bonding box. And then 
and then with uh, once this 2D bonding box was cre uh, is created, then I look for each of these pixels and I filter according to that information. Once we do that, we have the hand segmented. And uh, once we have the hand segmented, then uh, basically uh, I run some simple finger fingertips tracking that I look at the uh, I I find the contour of the hand segmented, and then I uh, I find the hard curvature. Where the points which has high curvature, then I assume that is the finger. And well, it it works quite well, but it has some problems. I will explain it what what are the problems are or the disadvantages. Now uh, I've used the data information to to segment the hand, but what is the problem that that is uh, works well as uh, with a maximum distance of 1.5 to 2 meters because of the resolution of the dev camera. If you move uh, further than this distance, and since the hand is not a very big object or a very, or a very big part of the of the user, then it's very difficult to use this information to segment it. And also, as well, we will see later, uh, if you want if you want to track uh, uh, using two cameras, uh, uh, it's get, it gets difficult to segment uh, the hand using two cameras because the infrared light projectors interfere, interfere with each other and then it makes uh, the dead information more noisy. And if you want to track so small things, then if you make the dead information more noisy, no, noisier, then uh, it gets more difficult to, to, to do this task, to track. What is the advantage? It's like, well, that uh, to track, it works well in any light conditions because we can, for example, envision a space that uh, the, the room is pretty dark, then it, uh, you can also track the, the, the fingertips of the user because you don't, you don't need to look at the RGB information. And then also you don't have to you don't have to need you don't have to wear any gloves or any markers in the fingers to track it. I guess that that maybe the now the optimal solution will be to use both to for example do a first approximation of using that information and then help with the RGB information to uh, to achieve the task of the fingertip fingertip uh, tracking. Okay. Then do, during this time, I thought, well, um, what we get from the from the Kinect is is basically a bunch of three-dimensional points uh, in a in, in a space. But well, uh, with the, all these points, it doesn't. What we can do with that? Because uh, with a bunch of points, uh, you can, for example, uh, point the Kinect to a chair, but it doesn't interact. Well, the the chair it's not interactive. Then, because uh, we don't have enough information, I thought, well, if from uh, if from um, the Kinect we can reconstruct a mesh or triangularize the information, then we we'll, we could we will make we could make everything that the Kinect sees interactive. Because we, then we can uh, put all this information, for example, in a in a physics library, and then make everything uh, responsive, interactive to other virtual elements. And then I found some software that uh, do that for us. And then uh, that given a bunch of points, three-dimensional points, it triangularizes, and then it, uh, it, uh, you can reconstruct the mesh. For example, you can see that here is a bunch of uh, points that th these points are not connected. And then after this processing, then you can get the, the, all the mesh, and you can see that not only is helpful for integrating with physics library, but is visually more appealing or more attractive to look at. And then, uh, well, we will, I will say, I, I will tell this in the conclusions, but I think that this part of building a mesh from, the, from a point cloud, it will be very helpful for tasks for like modeling. But we'll go deeper in. in later. Yeah, 
Jesus. Well, now I will move to uh, the use of multiple kinects. Then, why we want to use multiple kinects? Then, basically, there is a, a very basic reason is because uh, from the kinect you only have one. When you want to track the environment, the kinect you only have one viewpoint, one point of view. But what happens if, for example, if I'm interacting the kinect and someone or some object uh, is placed between the kinect and me? That it, uh, it makes occlusion and then the Kinect no, can no longer track me or objects that are uh, behind the objects <coughs> that are in front of <coughs> the Kinect. Then, how we can solve this problem? Then, if we can place another Kinect in a, another uh, in a, in a, another position, then we have two points of view of the environment and then merging this information, it uh, uh, will avoid and then these occlusion problems. For example, here we see that these two RGB images are taken from two Kinex placed in a different position, and you can see that in this first image, uh, this uh, this right arm, uh, well, you cannot see the right hand, and in this other image, you cannot see the left hand. But if we take all the information of both image, then we can still reconstruct here the skeleton of the user. I see if I move closer. See that, that that the skeleton of, you, of the user is still reconstructed because, because taking all the information of both cameras, we still uh, see all the all environment. But now I will explain that it has also some disadvantages to use multiple multiple connects. Well, before that, why uh, how we can. Uh, develop how we can connect multiple Kinex. Basically, we have to calibrate the Kinex. There are different methods. What I use is like a stereo calibration that using this chest bone pattern that I think is in the, in the car box, then and calibrate it correctly, we will, uh, we, we will know the position of one Kinex respect to the other, which transformation of rotation and, and translation uh, in physical coordinates, then um, from one Kinect to the other. And then, for example, given one point from the coordinate system of one Kinect, we can transform it to the other to the other Kinect and, and merge all the information. There are some problems. I've told before that when <coughs> using multiple Kinects, for example, finger tracking, it gets difficult because the, there are interference with, uh, with the inf infrared laser projector of each one Kinect. And here we see an example. In the right image, there is uh, the use of one Kinect. But in the left image, you see that it gets more noisy. There are some black spots. Uh, that is because the, the, the dev information of the, uh, the this dev information uh, is, uh, it gets more noisy because there is another projector that is also projecting the, infra the infrared light on me. And basically, is. Uh, it's not a very big problem because, for example, uh, it suffers when you are trying to you know, calibrate the user. It suffers, but then you can also calibrate the user sequentially. Here's one camera and then other camera. But when you want to track uh, and use the information to, to segment, for example, uh, like, uh, like the hand, is when the, com the problem arises. And then uh, you cannot do that uh, using more than one Kinect. Well, here is like a list of points about like a conclusions or like personal opinion. First, I will talk about the environment reconstruction modeling. Uh, maybe the, the the if you have model uh, if you have used uh, like three modeling tool, 
you will know that to model something is like it's a task that uh, it requires a lot of time, and maybe you will want to like model something very fast and. And also, if you don't know modeling, you have to ask someone to do this job for you or to find models in the internet. Then, the, I think that this is a, will be a very useful tool for this because you can reconstruct the environment and then save this information uh, into a file and also import this information to a 3D modeling tool that will make this uh, process of modeling very quite fast. And then, uh, for example, if you model a table, you can scan using the Kinect and then uh, get this, uh, get the, uh, import this model into, like, into a 3D modeling tool and, and solve, your, solve your problem maybe in one day. Then also, I guess that uh, in, the, in the future when it gets higher resolution of depth sensor, everything will improve a lot because now, for example, when I said that the tracking fingers only works uh, as long as you uh, are in less than two meters from the camera, it's like quite inconvenient. It's like because you have to have the camera very close to you. And then there is uh, the three point. I think is quite important. This like community that have uh, appeared in this year that has released this uh, point call library. That is, uh, you can think about this community as open. It's like an open CV, but open CV deals with uh, 2D image processing, but in this case with 3D image processing or 3D point cloud processing. And uh, they, are developing, they are developing a very good algorithm, like for example, object segmentation, and, and a lot of algorithms that may be very useful for use it in our application. Then I guess that uh, uh, when the software will, or the libraries and the frameworks will get more mature, for example, uh, they, will improve, they will improve a lot, for example, in developing in our custom gestures. For example, in the OpenAI Net framework, it only allows you to to identify and track uh, a limited uh, number of gestures. For example, push, sweep, right. But maybe you will want to uh, to provide your own gesture because maybe for any application, uh, for example, you either wanted to run or maybe this you have to program by by yourself. Then I guess that soon the, the, this framework will allow you to. Easily allowed to uh, to track your own gestures very uh, very easily. Then, well, this is an improvement of frameworks and library that you have to take into account that these libraries are very recent. They, they appear in this year. Then, they are still under development. For example, uh, I had a lot of problems, a lot of fights trying to connect to devices because lack of support in the first releases of this framework. And then now it's like give a little bit of support, but Still, there are a lot of problems, and I guess that in one year or two years, we'll see a lot of uh, improvement in this sense. And then, uh, as I said, uh, there are basically two powerful frameworks, that is OpenAI and Kinect SDK, that each, each one has its own strength and weakness. And I guess that maybe the best solution will be to integrate all of this. I guess that no, there will not appear any official framework that integrate all of these frameworks, but there are people that are working on that and uh, and try to in the same application to to use both frameworks at the same time. And the last point I think that is quite interesting is the object segmentation recognition given 3D data. That um, uh, the, before this, uh, when you work only in 2D image, it's very difficult sometimes uh, to track all the objects in the sand to identify that this is a chair that is the curtain or then I guess that now with the uh, now with this like this community that deals with processing of the information that all the all these kind of things that recognition segmentation that will be very easy uh, more easy and then I think more reliable tracking uh, given this new new information that we can extract with this device that extract the 3 d environment and, and, then, and this is the demo I developed that is uh, I wanted to to show uh, everything I experimented with the Kinect like in, in the presentation. Basically uh, when I when I'm doing a presentation I I well 
I make use of all these points. For example, I make just recognition. For example, when I try to make a slide forward, a slide backwards, I do swipe right and swipe left. I track the skeleton. For example, here you can see that uh, my orientation, uh, change the orientation of the, the point of view of the user. You can move also up and down. And then because I'm using the, the shoulders and know the, where, I'm, where I'm looking at. I also use finger tracking, you can see here in the, in the image, using the algorithm I explained before. See that when I move further, it gets more noisy and then it's not so reliable, the finger tracking. But if I'm closer, then it, it works better. Then send reconstruction, as you, as uh, you will see in the video, I will show later. I also, what you see in the, <coughs> in the what you see in the background is basically the office of Adrian. That I also using the Kinect, I I scan the environment and I save it with the mesh, and then I load it in my application. And for example, this mesh also you can load with, for example, Blender modeling, and you can also do your modification and. For example, if uh, you want to do a game based on the room of Adrian, now you, I don't have to model all the room, but I can scan it and maybe in two hours I have all the, all the environment model. And that's, uh, that's why I told that for modeling it will be a very useful tool. And then the last thing is like manipulation video content, an example of how, an example of demo, how we can make sense of everything, it's like, in this case, I manipulate multimedia content. Now I, I'm, I'm using a presentation to, for example, different other slides to move, to move forward and backward. And then now I will show you a, a video. Let's see. Here's also sometimes, I know, sometimes the problem is that if you are not careful, sometimes it loses track of the hand that is used for doing the gestures. And that is the more problematic thing that, since uh, now, uh, now with the software you have to calibrate it, if you lose the track of the hand that makes the gestures, you have to calibrate it again, and, and I guess that when the software gets more mature, it will be automatic calibration, and will not be this kind of problem. Here is the video. Well, maybe a little closer. And this is like a video I did that explains what everything I did. Maybe what I w what it will be better maybe to to not the to show the video not in the virtual environment because now this isn't, doesn't run very fast. It runs like eight frames per second, and doing a video with eight, eight frames per second is very slow. And then we, maybe we should I will show you the video not in the virtual environment. That's one of the improvements I have to make uh, to make it run this application faster because if you want to make a video like that, like it might take hours. Okay, I s switch that, and what I will do is to show the video. Mm. Well, here is now it runs very fast because I <laughs> the thing is that I make the video sixty frames per second because the kit account that I would in the application, but now if I run the, the video <laughs> that runs very fast. But okay, I will stop and <laughs> Here, for example, um, we, 
we can see that here, for example, here is the reconstruction given in the point of view of one kinect. This is the point of view of the other kinect. And then once once everything is calibrated, what we can do is and um, we know the how the kinects are positioned in the space, and then we can transform the point cloud of one kinect to the system of coordinates of the other kinect and then mix all the information together. Here is the skeletal tracking that as you can see I will show how to avoid the occlusions. For example here you can see that even if this camera doesn't see the right the right hand then the skeleton is still can track and the same happens here. And also, for example, if the camera is here and I'm interacting this way, of course, what I'm doing here, the camera cannot see because myself is occluding the, this position. Then if I have another camera in front, I can interact in more free, with more freedom. Here is the frequent reconstruction. That is how I, I model the, the room of uh, the office of Adrian. Then basically, is I, I use a software, the uh, library that's called NestyK, that uh, one guy developed that allows you to do that. You are moving one kinect around the environment. It uh, it grabs all the info. It, it starts grabbing frames and then it makes all this information. I move the the kinect and as soon as I move, then when I what I want, I stop and see that I can make this. The oops. I see that all the office is uh, scanned and then also this. Uh, this bunch of point clouds you can be imported into modeling tools to do whatever you want to do. And then also you can save it and load this and then load it in your own application. And this is basically a demo that is what, what, you, what you have seen here that you can uh, move up, translate objects in, uh, in the virtual space and then do some gestures, for example, to say, All right, now activate this object too because I want to start the presentation or move uh, a slide forward, slide backward. And then when, for example, when I finish, I do the gesture, sweep down, and then uh, I can modify it a little bit. Well, that's it. Thank you very much. And <coughs>